Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah all praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we send peace and blessings upon his beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam my brothers the prophet he says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says he who loves to meet Allah Allah loves to meet him and he who hates to meet Allah he who dislikes to meet Allah Allah jalla jalalu dislikes to meet him Allah loves to meet us, my brothers and sisters. Allah Jalla Jalalu didn't create us so He can punish us. Hasha lillah, it's unbefitting to Allah. It's unbefitting that the King of Kings, the one that owns the heavens and the earths, creates a weak creation only so that He can punish Him. It's not how it works, my brothers. Allah Azza wa Jalla loves us. The human is more beloved to Allah than the angels. It's the most honorable of Allah's creations. Allah didn't create us to punish us. Allah didn't create us to make things difficult. Allah gave us a deen, He gave us a sharia that to the untrained eye, please brothers, no one to be recording inshallah, please. To the untrained eye, to those who just don't know, sometimes the sharia can come across as, why? Like, why is this? Why can't I do this? Why can't I go there? Why? And then, sometimes that can be understood as in, you know, brother, like this, that the deen can be difficult. But wallah, my brothers and sisters, if you were to know, every single command of Allah is nothing but rahmah. Especially the ones that you dislike. It doesn't change Allah, my brothers. If every, in fact, the Prophet, he says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this may even be a hadith Qudsi, if every single one of us was to sin, if every one of us was to sin and sin until all of us became like the most toxic, the worst heart, the most, yani the biggest criminal on earth. If every human being was to sin and sin until we became like the most corrupted and the most criminal heart on earth, doesn't change Allah in the least. Doesn't change Allah. And the opposite is true. If you were to worship Allah, if we were all to worship Allah until we all became like the most pure and the most purified and the best of hearts, it doesn't change Allah. Allah is the king before me, after me, during, be whether I pray, I don't pray, I fast, I don't fast, I accept, I don't accept. Allah is the king. Allah owns the heavens and the earths. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need. When Allah tells you and I, don't do this or do this or stay away from this, that's only Allah's rahmah. It's only Allah's rahmah. And Allah has created a paradise, the likes of which no eye, Allah mentions in the Quran, the likes of which no eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard, no human mind or heart has ever imagined or can possibly comprehend. You can never talk about Jannah. We can mention whatever Allah has mentioned, but like, you, you can never have a proper description. How? How do you describe it? Like, as a human being, we need a point of reference. My like, brother, if I said to you, brother, I went to some. Some island somewhere and I ate a fruit and it was the most incredible fruit I ever heard, you know, ate. Naturally, as a human being, you're going to ask me, brother, what does it look like? How do I describe it to you? So, you're going to tell me, I don't know, I mean, does it look like a banana? Does it look like a... I need a point of reference. But what do I compare it to? There's nothing on earth like it. How does Allah describe to this limited human being what Jannah is? How does He do it? You're limited. You're limited in your understanding. Allah says what He's created. Who did Allah create that for? Allah loves the human being, my brothers. Allah didn't create us to make things difficult. Allah wants us, and you see this again and again. Allah's rahmah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ability to forgive. It's incomprehensible. Like, wallah, it's beyond imagination. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala... Allah's ability just to forgive, forgive the Prophet. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah, he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, when one of you commits a sin, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala writes one sin. But whenever you, but when any one of you does a good deed, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala writes down 10 and he multiplies it. Allah doesn't plus. Yani, it's not like if you did one good deed, Allah gives you 10 and then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala pluses more. Allah multiplies. Who does that? 10 multiplied by 700, by th Allah multiplies, Allah multiplies. You do one bad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you one sin. You do one good deed, the minimum you get is 10. So why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing that? So many doors for forgiveness. Sometimes you're not even conscious of it. 
You say astaghfirullah, Allah forgives you. You make wudu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives your sins. You make salah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives your sins. You come to the masjid and you pray in jama'ah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives your sins. You attend the Jum'ah prayer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives your sins. You sit in a gathering where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned, Wallah, I don't understand. Even if you had no intention on being here, I'm sure there's someone he he got caught up and he couldn't say no and it's just awkward for him and he's and he's like his manum sadda empty and this whole thing finishes so he can get out of here. Even him, oh Allah, it's actually mentioned in the hadith. The angels say, Oh Allah, but there's a man who has no intention. Allah says, even him, I forgive him. Simply because he was in the gathering. Allah doesn't Allah hasn't created us to make things difficult or to punish. It's, it's unbefitting to Allah. Again and again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives sins, forgives sins. He says, oh my slave, if you came to me, if you came to me and your sins have reached the heavens, the heavens, not well, I want to, your sins have reached the heavens, but you don't associate partners, you don't associate partners with me and you ask me for forgiveness, I will come to you and I will match you with mercy that match your sins. Allah wants you, my brother. My sister, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you. Allah azza wa jal loves you. Hashalillah, Allah is above any example. Like any father here. Does, like, no father consciously wants to make his child's life difficult. No one does that. And you young brother, how do you imagine yourself as a father? How? As a good guy, I want to make things easy for my son. I want to give him the best. Naturally, like all good people think like this. But if my son came to me, right, like this kaki here, if he came to me now and he asked me, well, you know, like he's only six. So if he said to me, dad, you know what, 12 o'clock at night, I want to go run on the street. Do I let him go? So why are you being difficult for? But don't you want your son to be happy? But don't you want him to prosper? But don't you want him to have a good time? And so now you're thinking, yeah, but come on, brother, you got to be reasonable. Yeah, that's exactly right. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to me, don't do this, it's not because uh, hash, Allah doesn't need. But when Allah tells me, don't do this, it's because He cares for me. Allah wants the best for me. Even and especially when I don't know what's good for me. So when my son tells me, you know, Dad, I want to go to the city on a Saturday night and well, I want to go have fun. And he's only 13, 14 years of age. Naturally, as any sound father, what are you going to say to him? Brother, you're going nowhere. You're going nowhere. Not because I don't want you to have fun. Not because I didn't raise... No one raised his son so he can make him miserable. That's not the point. You've raised your son, you want him to be the best. But when I say to him as a responsible adult, when I say to him, you're not going there, that's because I know what you don't know. So you turn around and say to me, oh, what, brother? But then you trust me, dad? Then you trust my friends? Don't, brother, it's not... I, and sometimes what I need to say is beyond your comprehension. But nevertheless, it doesn't change my stance. You're not going. Allah wants what's best for us. Allah, Allah, Allah yearns to see us, my brothers. Allah loves to meet His slave. He's created you. Every single heartbeat of yours, every time your heart beats, he beats, he needs permission. That who gives it that permission? Every blink of your eye takes permission from Allah. Who gives it to it? Why? Because he hates you? Brother, not last week. Last night, every single one of us was dead. We were dead. Sleep is the minor death. What's the dua we, we, we make when we wake up? First thing you say, obviously, it's like with anything. We praise Allah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alladhi. All thanks and all glory be to the one who did what? Ahiyano gave me life. Ba'dama, after, he gave, bro, we were all dead. Ba'dama amatana. Every one of us was dead last night. Tab, who gave you life? Was it your money? Was it your mother, your father, your know-how, your mates, your business? What was it that gave me life? Allah. Why? Because he hates me? No, my brothers. Allah Azza wa Jal, he loves the human being. He loves him. Especially the Muslim. He who loves to meet Allah, Allah loves to meet him. A man killed 99 people. 99. Look, you, most of you know the hadith. What does Allah want? Really, let's get to that. What does Allah want? 
that you make an effort. That's it. Like there's not, it's not some fit. It's make an effort. That's all Allah wants. A genuine effort. My slave, if you come to me a hand span, I come to you an arm's length. Who talks like this? My slave, if you come to me walking, I come to you running. Does this sound like a Lord that wants to punish me? The man killed 99 people. Authentic hadith. 99 people. But like, what sort of individual do you have to be for that? 99? And the number was specific. Brother, there are soldiers in war who don't kill that many people. Anyway, most of you know the story. So something enters his heart, he's yearning for Allah. So he goes to the people, he says, you know, can I make Tawbah? So the people say to him, look, you know, there's a righteous man, go to him, ask him. He goes to the man, he says, look, I've killed 99 people. The guy says, 99? He couldn't comprehend the figure. He says to him, brother, no way Allah can forgive you, no way. So to show you the ruthlessness of the man, he kills him too. Like, bro, that's ya latif, man. Like he killed, like he, he, he didn't kill a guy who challenged him or you know, swore at his sister. No, no, but the guy's a abid. He killed a abid. He killed a man who's a pious. A, and, and, and simply because he didn't like his fatwa. Bro, imagine this guy was in the area now. <laughs> it's known. It's madness. Anyway, so now after a hundred... Look, but look, what's the key? No, here, there's, a, there's a sincerity, man. There's a genuine sincerity. After a hundred, he still wants Allah. Anyway, uh, it's not the point. I wish I could dissect the story. Anyway, he ends up going to a scholar. And that's the difference. So he goes to a scholar, says, look, I've killed a hundred. Can Allah forgive me? The scholar turns around and says to my brother, who can stand between you and the forgiveness of Allah? Who? But this is where things get interesting. There's not a man or woman in this building today in the house. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I don't need to ask. I already know. Every single one of us want Allah. And every one of us wants change. And every one of us wants to make it. I, wallahi, I get it. But what's the difference? What's the difference between us and this guy? Like honestly, do I need to ask anyone here, that, brother, do you want to be a hafiz of the Quran? Really, do you? Like you look at me and say, come on man. Every one of us here would wish to be. What an honor. But what's the difference? What's the difference between you and I and the Hafiz of the Quran? <coughs> so he says to him, but my brother, yeah, Allah can forgive. He says to him, but look, and this is it right here. He says, but in order for you to complete your tawbah, and you forgive, he says to him, brother, you need to leave this town. You need to leave. You're surrounded by corrupted people here. You need to leave this town and you need to go to a place where there's good people and they will help you and they will assist you towards your tawbah. And that's it right there. We want forgiveness. We want change. But I'm not prepared to pack up and leave. Now this doesn't necessarily mean I need to leave my area. Brother, you're not prepared to leave your friends. You're not prepared to change your ways. You're not prepared to change your surroundings. You're not prepared to give up your haram earning. Brother, I'm not prepared. But I want Allah's forgiveness. Yeah, but it doesn't work like that. So this man being true and genuine, he packs his bags, he's on the way to the town of forgiveness. Wallahi, read the hadith, it's incredible. On the way, Allah takes his life. So the angels of mercy come down and the angels of punishment come down and then there's a dispute. The angels of punishment say, no, hang on, this, this man's ruthless, he's killed a hundred people. So the angels of mercy trying to argue on his behalf. They said, yeah, he killed a hundred, but he's making tawbah. The angels of, of, of said, no, 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 he was on the way to tawbah. He didn't complete it. So it was a genuine discussion. So Allah Azza wa Jal, he sends down a third to be a judge between the, three, between the two. He says to them, measure the distance of the earth. If he's closer to the town of sin, then let the angels of punishment take him. And, he's closer to the sound of, and if he's closer to the town of good, well then let those angels take him. So they measure the distance, unfortunately for him, he was closer to the town of sin. This is a man that killed a hundred people. Allah Azza wa orders the earth to change its dimensions. 
Allah threw physics, science, uh, mother nature, whatever you, Allah threw it all out of the window. None of it applied. None. A man who killed a hundred people, Allah changed the world. He moved the dynamics, the physical exist. Allah Azza wa Jal changed the dimensions of the earth and made him what? One hand span to the town of good. And he said to the angels, take him. The angels of mercy, take him. It's a man who killed a hundred. He who loves to meet Allah, Allah loves to meet him. So in short, my brother, what does Allah want from us? Just genuine steps. No luggage. No luggage. We all want Allah, but there's luggage. Wallah, brother, you know, look, I really want to change, but this, but that. All right, so what, what do you, I don't, I, don't, I don't know, like, what do you, what do I say to you? That luggage is weighing us so, it's weighing us down from things that beyond comprehensible, bro. Allah, just make a move. Wait, one genuine move, bro. And watch and see what Allah Azza wa Jal will do. But it needs to be unconditional. One thing, bro. One step towards Allah. That's all you need to do. Allah loves you. I'm not saying that because I'm trying to win your hearts. Allah, Allah, Allah loves you genuinely. You know, my brothers, when you say, Ya Rabb, you don't know what's happening in the heavens. A slave called upon his master. You might think, yeah, but brother, not me. Why not you, Akhi? Why? Why not you? Allah, brother, you don't know, man. Wallah. And that's, you know, Wallah, my brothers, this isn't a level of iman. This is just shaitan. Brother, I'm, you don't know, understand, bro. Like, oh, Wallah, I've got so much sins. I've got so much shortcomings. I've done so much muharramat. This isn't a level of faith. This is just shaitan who's clouding us. That's all. I challenge any man to stand, any man, stand here if you're free from sin. I don't care how big your beard is. Go, I challenge you. You can't, bro, no one. We've, bro, we've all got sins. That's why we need Allah Azza wa Jal. Because I'm not perfect, bro. No one is. But make a move. Make, take a genuine step to Allah. Tonight, now. One istighfar, bro. One genuine from the heart. Ya Allah, forgive me my sins. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives. Allah loves to forgive. My brothers, we need to make this move. Why? Ramadan's around the corner. Look, if you ever wanted a sign of Allah's love, just look and see where you are. It's a Friday night. Of all the places on earth, look where you are. Do you think that's coincidence? I'm asking you sincerely. Do you think that's coincidence? With all your flaws and all your mistakes and all of your sins. You and I as Muslims, do we believe in coincidence? A Muslim doesn't believe in coincidence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does. Like you can't say you are a coincidence. What do you mean bro? 50,000 years before Allah created the heavens, everything is the, one of the pillars of Iman is to what? Is to believe in the decree of Allah. Khayrihi wa sharrihi, the good and the bad. Everything is decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you're here tonight, why? You might think, oh, well, brother, because my mate texted me or, uh, you know, I seen Sheikh Fulan's name and... There's... No, bro, you're here because Allah Azza wa Jal loves you and, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah invited you to his house. And look where he's sitting on a Friday night. There's a million places you can be right now. The most beloved places to Allah Azza wa Jal on earth are what? Are what? His houses, bro, his houses. Not only did Allah allow you to come, he allowed you to sit in a gathering where he's mentioned. Authentic wallah, authentic ahadith, authentic narrations. There are angels who their only job is to, you know, is to fly around the earth. They're in the heavens. Their only job is to fly around the earth and to look for any gatherings where Allah Azza wa Jal is mentioned. Then when the angels find these gatherings, they start calling upon one another. So the angels start calling upon other angels and they say, look, we found what we've been looking for. And then, he's, and then he mentions sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in the hadith, and then the angels, they come to any gathering where Allah Azza wa is being mentioned, and the angels, they start stacking upon one another. They start stacking up upon one another until they reach the heavens. And then there's a commotion. Wallah, my brothers, I'm not. This is authentic hadith. There's a commotion in the heavens. This is why as a Muslim, it's iman, belief in the unseen. 
Everyone and anywhere in the world, they tell you seeing is believing. This doesn't apply to the Muslim. We believe in the unseen. You have to have complete conviction and iman that this is happening right now. Not because I said so. La wallah. Because it's an authentic hadith from the Prophet wasallam. Right now in this masjid, you, the one who thinks I'm a sinner and I'm this and I'm that and you don't know. And you right now, there are angels that are stacked upon one another and they've reached the heavens and there's a commotion. So Allah Azza wa Jal, He calls upon the angels. Of course He knows. He calls upon the angels, He says to them, what's going on? So the angels say, Ya Allah, there's a group of people that have gathered, they've sat, and they're remembering you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and why have they sat? And they said, Ya Allah, they've sat to remember you, to glorify you. And then Allah says to the angels, and what do they want? The angels say, Ya Allah, they're asking. They're asking protection from your Jahannam. Allah says, have they seen my Jahannam? They say no. He says, what if they were to see it? He says, Ya Allah, they would ask for it more. He says, what else do they want? He says, Ya Allah, they're asking for your Jannah. He says, have they seen my Jannah? They say, no, Ya Allah. He says, what if they were to see my Jannah? They say, Ya Allah, then they would ask for it more. And then Allah Azza wa Jalla says to them, and, then, and what else? What is it that they're asking for? You've been sitting here for the last hour and a half. You probably didn't ask for a single thing. The angels are doing this on your behalf. This, and then the angels say, oh Allah, they're asking for your forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, let it be known that I have forgiven every one of them their sins. And I have granted them what they're seeking from me. There are angels in this gathering, they're rubbing their, they're rubbing their wings against your shoulders. Brother, if that's not love, I don't know what is. If that's not a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you, then brother, wallahi, I don't know what you're looking for. Brother, your name, sister, your na by name, by name, you, you, your name was mentioned by an angel to Allah. Me? Brother, wallahi, yeah, you! With all your flaws and all your mistakes. Yeah, by name, Allah mentioned you by name tonight. So my brothers, wallah, Allah Azza wa Jal loves us. What does Allah want? Make a genuine move. Any one genuine, sincere step towards Allah. Don't delay. Wallahi, don't delay. Ramadan's around the corner. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, and I'll end with this, I love this verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ And if you were to show me gratefulness, and shukr and thankfulness. Allah says, and if you thank me for the blessings I've given you, what does Allah do in return? Allahu Akbar. La azidannakum. Then I will grant you more. You thank Allah and Allah gives you more. So Allah, my brothers and sisters, make that effort. Take a step towards Allah. No luggage. Don't fear. The Prophet, he says, sallallahu alayhi wa anyone who gives up anything for Allah, Allah will replace that thing with something far greater. It's not easy, but you got to make a move. Allah Azza wa Jal and yaqfi lil mu'minina wal mu'minat Allah hiya'i minhum wal amwat We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to have mercy upon the believers wherever they are, wherever they're in need. Ya Allah be with them, help them, aid them, support them, unite their hearts and their hearts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all of the brothers and sisters. Shaykh Khalid is here? He's not here. Ah, oh, he's in Auburn. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward the brothers and the committee of this masjid for the invitation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all for coming, inshallah. All right, brothers, please remain. We'll pray inshallah and then we'll go out and eat. Brother, that's not what we spoke about here, brother. <laughs> and I finished so we can go outside and kasir taksir hala abdilli four minutes. What's that? So inshallah ta'ala, whoever needs to make wudu, maybe go and make wudu. Four minutes, they'll, they'll make adan and then make the ikama right after, yeah? Yeah?